I'm James Spann. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday evening the 13th. And needless to say, uh, nationally, the attention is focused on the Great Plains tomorrow, where a very dangerous pattern is setting up. And around here, things are looking pretty good. Let's check some of the SkyCam shots around the Alpha SkyCam network. What a beautiful spring day. That's coming from Gadsden. It's a cloudless sky. Temperatures are in the 70s. Look at downtown Haleyville in Winston County. Not a cloud in the sky there. And, ooh, that looks nice. The Alabama Gulf Coast is seen from Gulf Shores on top of the Phoenix All Suites. Looking back to the east over toward the public pier down there and ultimately Orange Beach on down the line. Things evolving as forecast. We've got that big upper trough over the west. That's going to kick up quite a fuss over the nation's breadbasket tomorrow. Temperatures this afternoon just right, just where they ought to be for mid-April, low and mid-70s. Birmingham at 74 will be a bit warmer this weekend. Around the nation, you can see a warmer air beginning to bulge north across the plains in advance of that storm system. And again, that's just kind of priming the pump for a big outbreak tomorrow. Uh, nationally, got a uh, red flag warning for parts of New Mexico and West Texas, wildfire dangers. Look at the snow issues out west. I see winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories out there. And, yep, a tornado watch for parts of Oklahoma in extreme northwestern Texas. Uh, so far, no tornadoes as of this update about 3 o'clock, but a number of severe thunderstorm warnings issued out there. Got the standard slight risk for the rest of today and tonight over much of Oklahoma, southern Kansas, and the adjacent states. But this is the big story. Tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, a high risk of severe weather. Uh, the southern end includes uh, Oklahoma City. And the Interstate 35 corridor up toward Wichita. And up north, we've got a high risk for parts of Iowa and Nebraska. And a moderate risk surrounds that. And then the standard slight risk runs all the way from the Minnesota border down to about Abilene and San Angelo, Texas. And the probabilities are just off the charts. 60% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of any house. That's pretty amazing. Uh, the most significant numbers you typically see there are 30 and 45 percent. Pretty remarkable. And we'll take a look at modeling here. In fact, let's just go ahead and look at the uh, STP forecast. Uh, this is the significant tornado parameter uh, valid at 7 o'clock central time tomorrow evening. And the numbers are maxing out uh, in north Oklahoma and southern Kansas and also up around Omaha, Nebraska. And anything over one or two is very significant. And those numbers are up there in the uh, 7 to 8 unit range. Uh, keep in mind, those numbers were maxed out at 10 for April 27th of last year. And again, you know, comparing severe weather events, not necessarily a good thing in advance. Uh, April 27th for us was generational. Uh, I don't think this will bring as many tornadoes and the type loss of life we had, but still it's very significant. So if you know somebody out there in that zone where you see those darker colors, call them and let them know what's going on. And then on uh, day three, which is Sunday, we've got the standard slight risk. From East Texas and northwest Louisiana, up into Arkansas, Missouri, also a risk up on uh, around the Midwest, parts of Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois. The enhanced probabilities are uh, for places like Longview and Tyler, Texas, Texarkana, Fort Smith, and Harrison, Arkansas. But the good news, no risk beyond that. This is the day four through eight outlook that includes uh, Monday and the first few days of next week. It just doesn't look like we're going to have a severe weather issue here, which is good. There's the rain for the next five days. Bigger numbers down in southeastern Texas, over four inches there. And even in West Alabama, numbers are starting to ramp up. This is valid through Wednesday morning of next week. Look at modeling. This is 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon off the 12Z GFS, initially at 500 millibars. There's your trough in the west. We'll go to jet stream altitude. This is at 200 millibars, about 25,000 feet up. And you can see that jet max approaching the southern plains, a highly difluent flow, very favorable for severe weather. And down below that, the surface low is under 1,000 millibars over northeast Colorado. And uh, severe weather, fair game, anywhere east of the dry line over much of Oklahoma and Kansas and uh, points north, even down into parts of north Texas, they could see some pretty active weather. But we were in great shape. Uh, tomorrow, partly sunny with a high close to 80. Sunday, low 80s here. And again, you can see a few green spots and moisture will be increasing. And we'll mention a few isolated showers, but I think much of the day will be dry. The surface low is near Minneapolis-St. Paul at 992 millibars. And then Monday, the surface low shoots up into Canada, which is good. I mean, we're talking north of Maine, the Canadian Maritimes. And uh, 
The trailing front will bring a chance of showers and storms on Monday. We'll go ahead and include that. And then Tuesday, it's a slow-moving system. Uh, the front, in fact, kind of bogs down over the Tennessee Valley. So really both days, Monday and Tuesday, a good chance of showers and storms. Severe weather not looking likely at all, and that's good. Uh, there's the upper chart on Tuesday, and again, you can see how there's just not much energy involved, just a fairly weak trough coming in here. Wednesday, dry air begins to return, and there's no cold air involved with this. The high should be around 80. There's Thursday of next week, moisture trapped over South Alabama. We look dry. And a week from today, moisture starts to come back. That might suggest some chance of scattered showers, but nothing organized, nothing heavy. We'll check the end of the forecast, April 29th. Look at that upper high sitting right on top of us. Now, be thankful this is not August. That would be really ugly. But if by chance that's right, we're warm and dry with the stormy weather off to the west. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes on the blog. The man that looks like Colonel Sanders, Brian Peters, will have the videos tomorrow and Sunday. My next video here Monday morning by 7. And if you can, watch us on ABC 3340 News on the live stream or the TV side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren you cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.